Welcome back. Thank you for joining me again for another episode of Under the Influence. And this episode, we will be watching the channel Stone Age Man. He went on a magic mushroom retreat in Jamaica. And I guess he documented his whole experience. So I personally love Jamaica. It's one of the most beautiful countries in the world. And I did not know they did that there. So this might just be on my bucket list. So without further ado, let's check it out. Everyone, I am here at a magic mushroom retreat, and I thought it might be interesting for all of you if I walked you through what it was all about to do it in this way, in a legal way, in a setting that you have a bunch of caretakers who are professionals who can help you use it for therapy. This is another atypical Stone Age Man video. It's a bit of a behind the scenes to how a journey like this played out to help you visualize the inner workings a little bit more. This is a full batch of uh, beautiful psilocybin containing mushrooms. This may be of interest to those of you who simply want to see how a mushroom experience plays out. I know that I would have wanted to see this going in. So here goes. Now let me start at the beginning before we get to Jamaica. I must say I was actually nervous, but had a direct flight from Charlotte to Montego Bay. Now Jamaica is an interesting place because you fly in and you're greeted by the beautiful colored ocean waters and you land almost in the water. The crew had all decided to dye their hair blue so they all stood out. I guess this was because of the retreat name Blue Portal and because of the fact that psilocybin Portal. mushrooms bruise blue. It's blue right there, can you see that? Look at that. Now the actual retreat was only about 30 minutes from the airport at this small little villa in the water. After traveling for a long time, it really was nice to finally unpack and check into a seaside home on the water. I've been to several places in Jamaica in the past, and this was exactly what I needed. An old place with some history behind it where we could then jump into the water. Oh my gosh, this is beautiful. The others yeah, came in on different beautiful. flights and we all met right here. This is the Caribbean. We are feet away from the water right now and eat dinner and just look out. Now you may notice that many people were blurred out in the main video, as well as they are in this one. That is the stigma coming to the surface. You see, everyone was generally a pretty high-ranking individual, either in government or education or business, and they were worried about what others might say back home, even if it's legal here. What I did think was great about this experience here were the others on the trip. That's kind of a theme of how I'm talking about this. But every individual had unique experiences and we all learned from each other. So meeting them and bonding was at least 50% of what made it so truly special. At the same time we met everyone else, of course we met the facilitators. Tred Cotter here is a mycologist. He has 25 years experience as a scientist and a grower. That meant I really believed in the quality of the mushrooms he grew down here. Believe it or not, that's actually pretty important. The therapist here was Irene, who I really grew to love. She's someone I trusted a ton for her expertise and her knowledge of the science, the clinical trials that have been done to make this a really effective therapy. And then I loved hearing her personal story with psilocybin. It's hard to believe, but in three sessions with psilocybin, like all the heaviness, trauma, everything that I was carrying with me, it just disappeared. Then we had facilitators like Pasha and Ivana with their different expertise in Reiki and yoga and massage, things that most of the people here took advantage of in their free time. With our input, it just worked as a magic. Now that first night, we had individual sessions with the facilitators. People are going in on one-on-one -on -one sessions with the therapist. We all talked about our intentions and what we wanted to get out of this experience. That helped them determine the dosage and our needs for the next day. And then the next morning we awoke, got mentally ready for the actual mushroom journey. This morning everybody did yoga, then we're going to go into the yoga studio in about an hour after very light breakfast, and we're going to have a whole day of experiencing the mushroom and see how it goes. By 10 a.m. we all met in the yoga center. What's great about this place is it's closed, it's a controlled setting, and there are a lot of people supervising your experience. So. Anybody that's going through hard times, immediately someone's there to take care of you. And I must say, this is the place that I would want to do the experience. We're positioned at different areas around the room, and we've already kind of picked out like who we've partnered with, with the participants that we may have a connection to, or a particular life bond, or a story that they shared with you. So sometimes we pick the participant, the participant picks us, and then, but we all share the whole space 
the facilitators watch over everyone. Now I should note, I actually wasn't nervous at all. It was great seeing the others around me getting ready. I did know that some of them were pretty nervous, so oddly that did make me relaxed. And then we each came up and got a blue bowl with the mushrooms which were ground up inside. It was a mushroom tea. And for those of you interested, I had 3.5 grams with a 1.5 gram booster, just in case I wanted it. I actually didn't end up taking it. We then laid down and did some light guided breath work and put on our headphones and masks. I expected it would take 45 minutes to kick in, but it was only about 15 minutes before I was off and having an intense dream. Wow. The meditation minutes. music I had in my ears was supplemented by the others around me who were bathing the room in a, a concophony of sounds that were really beautiful and relaxing. But they also walked around with burning sage, for instance, which increases your serotonin levels. And then they had other essential oils, which I don't actually know what they all did, but apparently Irene says they had some purpose. And it seems to me that English just doesn't have the words to describe what it was like. But I was in a purple palace that was actually an octopus enveloping this beautiful living space. And it wasn't scary. It was beautiful. In the palace, I immediately met my dog Falcon. I hugged him, and I was able to emotionally connect with him and come to grips with the fact that he only has a few days left, something I was really troubled by before I left. Then I moved on to the different rooms in the palace. My brother-in-law who committed suicide was in one, and I dealt with that. My dad was in another. I spent time getting emotional in each room, and then I moved to the next one, and I, it felt like I dealt with it. And then I realized I was in a big hall, and felt this great sense that the work I was doing in education was super important. I could feel it to my core. Hence, the dock that resulted from this whole experience. Upon coming back too, I sat in the room for another couple hours watching the others take off their masks. And when the medicine starts to work, we start to notice how people are reacting, whether it's body language or anxiety, laughing, tears, you know, all those things. And those people are made aware that we are present uh, very gently. And it's mostly an off-hands approach unless they ask. The facilitators gave me water and fruits, and it was really nice because it just showed up exactly when I thought I needed it. Then I went outside and chatted near the water with the others and by the big tree. I was able to open up and get emotional about trying to raise my kids. I just want to be a good dad. I'm trying my best. They're not the kind of emotional conversations I would have normally had, so it was really nice. That night, as things wore off, we had a great meal and all discussed what happened. The next day was more yoga, an art session, and a time for us to all reveal what the session was really like for us. And then that night, we had the integration ceremony. And now, for the bonfire. The integration, you see, is one of the most important things. It's where we could really think about and talk about what part of us we wanted to leave behind. And we wrote it down and symbolically put it in the fire. Some people said what it was, and I feel like that actually had a huge impact. It really made it more sticky. And then the next day was the day out. But before we left, we spent time learning about mushrooms and identification from Trad. He shows everyone how to create a spore print. We also learned about the current microdosing practices from Irene. And then we left on the plane, and the revelations really started coming for all of the people that I talked to more and more afterwards. And honestly, I don't know how to fully describe it, but I think Andrew said it best with this. The person who arrived two days ago is not the person who's going home. And I can't quite say what the difference is. I would be really disappointed in myself if all of what came up to be worked on didn't then get put into action. There is work to be done ahead. Yeah. But I feel like it was a thousand years of therapy in eight hours. I also think the group session here was the way to go. We ended up as a family together at the, at the very end, understanding and sharing. It was a much more powerful experience in my opinion. I mean, I didn't know any of these people except for Trad 48 hours ago, and now I'm giving them all hugs. So I hope this insight yeah, was interesting. I'm sure all people. retreats are a bit different, but Did this one proved to be experience? very successful. So I can't recommend Blue Portal here enough. I don't have to be in pain, so much pain and so much heartache. And it has just been so transformative. You know, I wish that I could easily just bottle it up and put it in a little package and just hand it to someone else. And it's available in here for whoever and whenever you want to explore and, and journey back home. Okay, so that was uh, the Jamaican Magic Mushroom Retreat, and the company is called Blue Portal. So that's something I'm going to have to look into. I thought the environment looked great. 
being close to the water, amazing. The only thing, doing mushrooms in the daytime and nighttime, there is a drastic difference. At least I find it, personally, I found it a huge difference. I prefer doing it at nighttime, um, but you have less control over it, I feel, at nighttime. In the daytime, because there's so much light, you everything is just there, you know? Your mind can look at something. You will see a lot of visuals, but I feel at nighttime, it's just different. Like, I'm a stargazer, and if you look at the stars under psychedelics, like, the wonder will just come out. You will see things that will blow your mind. If you can just lie down there for a few hours and just look at the stars, you will see some amazing things happen. Because most of us don't look at the stars or sit and stare up at the sky for so long. But there's a big difference to me personally. I would do it at nighttime. So I hope they offer those day and night. But it looked really interesting. Uh, Blue Portal, the pe the facilitators looked really nice and kind. So, uh, yeah. That might be on my bucket list. We'll see. And uh, we'll see you again next episode, Under the Influence. Till next time.